In recent years, fascinating biblical discoveries have been uncovered at ancient Shiloh. This is where Joshua divided the land between the 12 tribes, where Hannah prayed for a son, and where the tabernacle stood for 40 years. The dedicated project director overseeing the excavation of the ancient Shiloh, archaeologist Stripling Scott, has made a groundbreaking revelation that promises to unveil a fresh chapter in the history of Shiloh, shedding light on the daily lives and practices of the ancient Israelites. What exactly did Dr. Stripling discover, and how did he uncover these clues? Join us as we journey back in time, delving deep into this ancient site to uncover the intriguing details that reshape our understanding of Shiloh's rich heritage. Dr. Stripling Scott's groundbreaking discovery of tabernacle artifacts at Shiloh has resounded throughout archaeology, particularly biblical archaeology. His findings have wielded a profound impact in multiple domains. First and foremost, Dr. Stripling's excavations at Shiloh have bolstered the historical accuracy of biblical accounts. By unearthing artifacts that align with the descriptions of the tabernacle and its usage as depicted in the Old Testament, he has provided tangible evidence that corroborates the biblical narrative. This revelation has ignited dedicated discussions among archaeologists, reigniting the debate surrounding the reliability of the Bible as a historical document. His remarkable contributions have set in motion a thrilling era of exploration, where ancient artifacts and their narratives intertwine to unlock the secrets of our past. The Bible is historically accurate, as confirmed by archaeological and historical evidence. It contains references to real people, places, and events that have been substantiated by research. This historical accuracy is evidence of the Bible's reliability as a historical source. Certain ancient events can be challenging to verify through historical records or archaeology, either because of their age or the precise details in the Bible. However, there are instances where external evidence supports biblical accounts. Archaeological findings, for example, have confirmed the existence of cities mentioned in the Bible, such as Jericho and Nineveh, and now the town of Shiloh, which Dr. Stripling Scott's excavation adventure will soon reveal. While sharing an update on the ongoing archaeological excavation, he shed light on the significant progress made since the initial visit to the site. Reflecting on the early stages of exploration, Dr. Stripling mentioned that their hypotheses were still taking shape during the first season. At that time, they believed that a substantial edifice existed extending from the pier to the tabernacle. The absence of gloss in that particular section led them to speculate that it might have constituted a gate complex. However, their understanding expanded as the excavation progressed and the team dug deeper. They meticulously excavated an additional five to six meters in certain areas, which in turn unveiled a multitude of structures. Based on their recent findings, they confidently assert that the site is likely the gate referenced in biblical accounts. This remarkable revelation adds a new layer of historical significance to the excavation, reinforcing the link between the archaeological remains and the biblical narrative. What role did Shiloh play in biblical history? Shiloh was a cornerstone of Israelite life in ancient times, a nexus of worship, governance, and communal assembly. The first time Shiloh was mentioned was in the book of Joshua, where it was chosen as the site for the tabernacle, a sacred place that enshrined the revered Ark of the Covenant. This holy vessel, believed to embody God's presence, transformed Shiloh into a spiritual citadel where Israelites gathered to offer fervent sacrifices and rendered solemn worship. Still, at this sacred site, Joshua divided the remaining land among seven of the twelve tribes of Israel, as recorded in Joshua 18, 19. Beyond its religious sanctity, Shiloh was the center for matters of governance and justice. Following a brutal civil war that threatened the tribe of Benjamin with extinction, the remnant tribes convened at Shiloh to chart their collective destiny. Then, Hannah, a barren woman, prayed to God for a child at Shiloh. Her fervent prayers for a child caught the attention of Eli, who initially mistook her distress for drunkenness. But recognizing her devotion, he blessed her, prophesying the fulfillment of her heartfelt desire, 1 Samuel 1, 9, 18. Hannah's faith was rewarded, and in time she gave birth to Samuel, 
whom she dedicated to the service of God under the guidance of Eli, the esteemed priest overseeing the tabernacle, who eventually became one of the most influential prophets in the Old Testament after receiving his divine calling at a young age. But sadly, the once glorious history of the city came to an end due to disobedience and corruption. The esteemed high priest Eli grappled with the misconduct of his sons, Hophni and Phinehas. They abused their priestly roles, seizing more than their rightful share of sacrifices and engaging in immoral relations, as recorded in 1 Samuel 2, 12, 17, 22. Because of that, the Philistines captured the Ark of the Covenant during a war between them and the Israelites. This catastrophic event led to the death of Eli's sons and, subsequently, Eli himself. In the words of the prophet Jeremiah, God used Shiloh as a reminder of the consequences that occur in people who drift away from their sacred covenant with God, serving as a warning against straying from righteousness. Intriguingly, beyond the biblical accounts, Dr. Stripling Scott's work promises to unveil a wealth of information about the ancient city of Shiloh. What discoveries did archaeologist Scott make at the Shiloh site? Through meticulous excavation methods and a deep understanding of the biblical text, he successfully identified the gate system in the archaeological site. With the help of cutting-edge technology like ground-penetrating radar and other advanced tools, their grasp of the biblical narrative solidified their groundbreaking discovery, shedding light on the layout and daily life of the ancient Israelites. This revelation stands as one of many exhilarating revelations emerging from the hallowed grounds of Shiloh. One of Dr. Scott's most significant discoveries was a sizable rectangular monumental building, which he believed to match the dimensions of the tabernacle. The measurements of this structure matched those detailed in Exodus 26, 15, 30. The tabernacle, revered as the sacred tent of meeting, was built in a three, one ratio, measuring a remarkable 30 cubits in length from east to west, while its width extended for 10 cubits from north to south. This unconventional three, one ratio defied expectations, setting it apart from mundane structures. In contrast, the tabernacle's outer court adhered to a traditional two, one ratio stretching 100 cubits in length and 50 cubits in width. Translating these ancient measurements into modern units, assuming a cubit to be approximately 18 inches as commonly estimated, the tent of meeting would have extended about 45 feet in length and 15 feet in width. On the other hand, the outer court would have embraced grandeur on an extraordinary scale, measuring roughly 150 feet in length and 75 feet in width. A sacred veil partitioned the interior of the tabernacle into two distinct sections, the first, which was the holy place, measured 20 cubits in length, approximately 30 feet or 9.1 meters. The second section, the most holy place or holy of holies, had a perfect cube of 10 cubits in length, width, and height. Its dimensions amounted to 15 feet or about 4.6 meters in each size, as outlined in Exodus 26, 31, 33. This revelation not only astonished the archaeological community, but also ignited the imagination of countless individuals, as the discovery of a structure mirroring the tabernacle's proportions brought ancient scriptures to life. The precision and accuracy with which the dimensions aligned served as a testament to the meticulousness of the biblical accounts, bridging the gap between a distant era and our present-day understanding. Dr. Stripling's belief that this structure might be the tabernacle was based on something other than its size and shape. The site yielded additional compelling evidence, like pottery, dating back to the era when the tabernacle was likely in use. This revelation promises a vivid glimpse into the ancient sacred space and its significance. Amidst the sea of remarkable findings, a small yet delicate white ceramic pomegranate, no more than a few centimeters in length, was found. Intriguingly, this tiny masterpiece bore a drilled hole at one end, suggesting its purpose as a pendant, perhaps meant to be suspended from a string. The pomegranate, a well-known symbol intertwined with the sacred rituals of Israelite tabernacles and temples, held great significance in their worship practices. References in Exodus 39, 24, 26 and 1 Kings 7, 18, 20 show the high priest's attire adorned with a string of miniature bells and pomegranates gracefully dangling from the hem. 
This small artifact might have served a similar religious purpose, enhancing the sanctity of the space. What makes this discovery even more extraordinary is its connection to another artifact unearthed nearly a century ago at the same site. A fragmentary object once perplexing in its broken state can now be confidently identified as another pomegranate, thanks to the recent parallel revelation. These two old objects coming together help us learn more about how the ancient Israelites practiced their religion and what they found beautiful. Close to these pomegranates were three altar horns, each carrying its own intriguing story. The first altar horn, an impressive 38 centimeters long and 23.5 centimeters wide, formed an integral part of an early Roman wall. Its sheer size and presence demanded attention, hinting at the grandeur of the altar it once adorned. As the excavation continued, a second horn, smaller in size at 18 centimeters long and 12.5 centimeters wide, was unearthed just three meters southwest of the first. These horns formed a tantalizing puzzle, offering glimpses into the past. In an adjacent square, deep in the scene of destruction, another horn, the third one, was found measuring 38 centimeters long and 20 centimeters wide. It captivated the imagination with its intricate details. These altar horns, resembling the powerful horns of a bull, were a prominent feature of the altar. These discoveries are even more interesting because the stone altar horns differ from what was described in Exodus 27, which gave specific details about how the altar should be made and used. Notably, these altar horns bear a striking resemblance in size to those found in Beersheba, offering a clue of the size of the altar block itself. The significance of these discoveries cannot be overstated. To date, only seven other stone altars from the biblical period have been unearthed in Israel, making each find a precious link to our ancient heritage. Each altar horn uncovered in Shiloh brings us closer to unraveling the mysteries of the past and paints a vivid picture of the religious practices that once reverberated through the land. Dr. Scott also unearthed a trove of sacrificial remnants that provide compelling evidence of the presence of the tabernacle in Shiloh. Among the discoveries was a significant deposit of pottery and animal waste, exclusively from kosher animals, carefully discarded on the Tell's side. These findings not only shed light on the religious practices of the Israelites, but also establish a tangible link between their worship and the sacred land of Israel. The sacrificial waste was strategically located adjacent to a monumental Iron Age structure, stretching from east to west, dating between 1177 and 980 BCE. Positioned on the northern slope, it was close to where the remarkable finds of altar horns and pomegranates were made. Dr. Stripling postulates that the primary tabernacle would have occupied the hill's summit, or resided on its northern slope. He further explained that the pottery used for consuming the sacrificial offerings was deliberately shattered, leaving the site strewn with fragments from that era. These pottery, scattered throughout, bear witness to the profound significance of the tabernacle and the rituals performed within its hallowed confines. This discovery shows that Shiloh differed greatly from the surrounding cultures influenced by the Canaanites and Philistines. It proves that Shiloh was a crucial religious center for the Israelites where they brought a new way of worship, and the unique remnants left behind tell us how dedicated the Israelites were to their faith and how much it shaped their practices. As if that wasn't enough to shed more light on the ancient ritual practices of the Israelites, Dr. Scott made a captivating discovery of sheep, goat, and cattle bones. What captured his attention was the uneven distribution of these bones, with a notable emphasis on the animal's right side, which aligned precisely with the practices described in the Book of Leviticus. Further examination revealed that the bone deposit consisted predominantly of animal remains that were part of the biblical sacrificial system. In fact, the overwhelming majority of the bones belonged to these specific animals. Intriguingly, less than 1% of the identified bones were traced back to pigs in the Israelite strata, a significant contrast to the previous layer, which contained 4% pig bones. Dr. Stripling attaches great importance to this disproportionate distribution of bones from animals deemed kosher for the sacrificial system, particularly emphasizing the right side. This significance stems from a verse in Leviticus 7.32, 33, stating that the right thigh of the sacrificial animal should be given to the priest 
as a contribution from the peace offerings. It is a designated portion for the son of Aaron, who is responsible for offering the blood and fat of the sacrifice. This meticulous distribution of bones reflects the careful adherence of the Israelites to their sacrificial rituals, as outlined in their sacred texts, an insight into their religious customs offering a glimpse into their devoutness and the deep significance they attach to every aspect of their worship. How do these recent discoveries strengthen our trust in the Bible, and of what importance is the Bible in understanding our ancient ancestors and human history? These discoveries reinforce the reliability and significance of the Bible in understanding our ancient ancestors and the human race as a whole. The Bible serves as a window into the cultures of the ancient Near East and the Greco-Roman world, offering valuable insights into their social structures, laws, customs, religious beliefs, and practices. As one of the most important historical sources, particularly the Old and New Testaments, the Bible provides a wealth of information about specific historical periods. It sheds light on those times' cultural, social, and religious contexts. Understanding the history of the Bible and its formation can strengthen the faith of believers. It allows them to grasp the context in which the Bible was written and the events that unfolded during that period. This understanding helps believers comprehend the message of the Bible and its relevance to their lives. The Bible serves as a testament to God's love for humanity, chronicling His interactions with people and revealing His plan for salvation. Trusting the Bible as a historical source enables believers to deepen their understanding of God's love and purpose. We are grateful to Dr. Scott and his team for bringing to light these fascinating discoveries. The discovery of these remarkable artifacts in biblical sites is nothing short of awe-inspiring. It ignites a sense of wonder and excitement, fueling our hopes for even more astonishing revelations to come. Each new find brings us closer to unraveling the mysteries of ancient biblical events, cultures, and history. With every excavation, we anticipate unearthing hidden treasures and unlocking the secrets of our past, not only at this site but in ancient biblical sites scattered across the globe. The journey of discovery has just begun, promising a tapestry of knowledge yet to be unveiled. Thank you for joining us on this journey of discovery. We hope you found it enjoyable. If you did, please consider turning on your notifications for more exciting and enlightening discoveries. Thank you for watching.